Hi, my name is Peter Mo, and I'm from Tourism Ireland's Nordic office in Copenhagen. Today we will be talking about the Morn Gullion Strangford UNESCO Global Geopark and their recent award as a UNESCO Global Geopark. And we have the perfect person with us here today to enlighten us on this. Darren Rice, Geopark Manager for the Morn Gullion Strangford UNESCO Global Geopark. <laughs> now that is a mouthful, but <laughs> Darren, you're very welcome to our show here today. But would you mind telling our listeners what a UNESCO Global Geopark actually is? Yes. Uh, hello, Peter. How are you? So, yes, a UNESCO Global Geopark is an area where sites and landscapes of international geological significance are managed for protection, education and sustainable development. So what this means in practice is there are areas where people come together to make the most of their beautiful internationally significant landscapes through sustainable tourism, biodiversity enhancement, geological heritage education and community engagement. So they're very much a bottom up approach combining all those things. So conservation with sustainable development, always involving local communities. And they're becoming increasingly popular across the world as well. Sounds like you have a good thing going there in terms of, uh, yeah, just managing your local area. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, we, we were um, coming up with a celebration event and how we're going to, you know, include everybody that's been involved in the in the geopark since uh, we started in 2012. And there are just hundreds and hundreds of people that have been involved. So it, it it's really a really good way to engage the community in the area. That's fantastic. But looking more at the geopark itself, what makes the Morn Gullion Strangford so special? And why was it awarded a UNESCO Global Geopark status? Well, I was born in the ge- this geopark. I live in this geopark. I, I, I love it. I, uh, uh, eat you live breeze. it. Yeah, I, I, li- I live this geopark. But I suppose to, 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 for, your, for your listeners, um, so Morn Gullion Strangford UNESCO Global Ge- Geopark is a geopark born of fire and ice. It's cared for by its people and shared with others. So it's a tale of two oceans, 400 million years in the making. So we are the only place on these islands and the only geopark in the world where we can tell this tale of two oceans. And that's about the closing of the Iapetus Ocean 400 million years ago, whenever Ireland and Britain were at the southern half of the world, so down near the Antarctic. And then they moved up through the latitudes, through the equator, and then the opening of the Atlantic started about 60 million years ago. And then all the glaciations after that has left the landscape that we see today. So that's our tale of two oceans. Okay, and how can you see that in the landscape then? So from, from from my house, from where we're sitting here now, I can look out and I can see the Morn Mountains right behind me. A little bit in the distance, we can see the Ring of Gullion. And then if I turn around and look north, we can see the Drumlins. So in the landscape, what you're seeing is the Ring of Gullion, which is 60 million years ago. That's a ring deck. Very, very... And what's a ring deck? Yeah, so it's, it's really geologically important. So it's it's the first ring deck that was ever geologically mapped in the world. So geologists used to flock to the Ring of Gullion for years. So basically a ring deck is where um, it's a collapsed caldera. So a volcano has okay. um, started to erupt, but it hasn't erupted. It's collapsed. So the middle of the volcano has collapsed and it's left a ring of mountains. Okay. Two million years after that, the volcano started to rise again. And then with a mountain in the middle, it also didn't erupt. So that was between 58 and 60 million years ago. F- fast forward a couple of million years. And then you've got the formation of the Morn Mountains. And that's where I live. I live at the foot of Slave Donard. It's the highest mountain in Northern Ireland. And that created this absolutely fantastic mountain range that you can get lost in for days. It's absolutely an, an, an incredible place. So that's where you can see it. And then, you know, 
And if I turn around and face north, we can see the drumlins and the sea and the coastline. And that's where you can see evidence of uh, these massive ice sheets that moved across the landscape and created these drumlin hills and sandbars and lovely um, dune coast systems that we see around our, our geopark. So, yeah, it's, it's all evidenced in, in the landscape. You see drumlin hills. What are drumlin hills? So Drumlin Hill, Drumlin's actually an Irish word. So Drumlin's were first described on, on the island of Ireland uh, and it's adapted in the geologic or uh, geology, the, the, you know, the subject of geology. So Drumlin Hills are basically small hills that the ice has moved over and that's the landscape it's left behind. So what, what, where we are mm-hmm. is very characterised by these Drumlin Hills. And then whenever you go out into the marine environment, it's even more special because... You've got drowned Drumlin Hills where the sea has actually come in in between all these hills and you've got lots of little islands. So there's hundreds of little islands in Strangford Lock. And when you, whenever you see this from the air or from a hilltop, it's a, just an incredible place. That sounds magical. I love the idea of just massive small islands. Um, yeah. Almost, you could say, <laughs> waves along the coast like uh, small peaks and valleys of uh, of islands. That's exactly it. And um, it, what, it, what it has done is created a really special place for wildlife. So, you know, even just last week, there was lots of dolphins in the Strangford Lock and people were getting the ferry across between the, the two sides just so these dolphins would swim past the ferry and they were taking lots of photos. But we get basking sharks and there's lots of um, mollusks and fish you know, so the mm. seafood around here is really nice. Yeah, so it's so it's really good place for biodiversity and um, lots of sea life. Just put that, that mosaic of habitat uh, underwater. Oh, that sounds that sounds incredibly lovely. I mean, obviously, you go there, and I mean, there must be some diving facilities. But what? Yeah, so so there are yeah, so there are diving facilities. But one of my favorite things to do on water is it's called sup and soda. So stand up paddle boarding. So basically you go out in the Strangford Lock uh, and it's really nice calm waters and you uh, stand up paddle board. Yeah. And just an incredible place. And you see fish and if you're lucky, you see dolphins and the lovely coastline. And then after you've finished your, your sup, you get back to land and you make soda bread. So that's a oh. soda bread making experience. So soda bread's very Irish bread. And th- th- that's one of the experiences, sup and soda. I wasn't expecting you to say soda bread when you said soda. Okay, that's yeah, that's quite yeah. fun. Yeah, it's fantastic. And um, the, the 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 provider is Tr- Tracy Jeffers that does the experience. She's just an incredible person, and she tells you all about the, the history of soda bread while you're making it. And of course, you get to eat it at the end of it uh, as part of a <laughs> meal, and it's just absolutely delicious. And again, we we can link that back to the geology of the area. So the flour that's used for soda bread. Is a very special and unique unique flower, and it grows in our geopark because of the geology. So that that Strangford Lock provides warmer weather in the winter and cooler weather in the summer. So it's very a very constant weather. So so we get really really good flour to make that bread. Okay, cool. So if we move more up into the um into the land, as to say, so yeah. how do you experience then the uh, Gullion or Caldera? Oh, there, there's there's lots of ways to experience it, but uh, you know, as as a visitor to the area, some of the experiences are just absolutely phenomenal. There, I'll, I'll tell you about a couple of them, Peter. I, I could spend hours talking about them all, but there's one called bully and butter. So bully is an old Irish word. Again, it comes from taking cattle up into the uplands during the summer for grazing. Mm-hmm. So that's bullying, and then of course the butter is just for making your own butter. So there's a, a company called Mountain Ways Ireland, a guy called Brian Hoey. He's a seventh generation farmer on that farm. So, you know, no visitors have ever been to this farm up in the uplands. So it's a really special place that we're welcomed into. He chats about all his farming, all the farming heritage. But then you get up and you go up into the high, highlands to do a bit of bullying. And there's a bully hut up there. He then teaches you how to make your own butter. And then you eat your own butter as part of a meal that he's planned. So he forages lots of food and food from his own farm. You, you get to have a, a really special lunch up in the, the ring deck. So uh, that, that's one experience. 
another one you'll see that i like all my food experiences peter <laughs> oh, that's uh, you, you, don't worry yeah. as do i <laughs> yeah so there's another one called sing for your supper so um there's a uh, two people colleen savage and padre carher colleen done a master's in irish music the songs of oriel so oriel is just a, a place name around here so she discovered okay. manuscripts that were written over a hundred years ago and they have never been sung aloud in a hundred years. So she takes visitors into this Iron Age roundhouse that we built. Yeah. And she teaches you an old Irish song, some in English, some in Irish. So you get to learn a little bit of Irish as well, a bit of, bit of Irish language, Irish singing tradition. And if you sing good enough, then you get your supper. <laughs> so it's all local ingredients. Uh, you get a bottle of local cider from just growing from down the road and your, your, your local yeah. stew. So that's a really good experience as well, sing for your supper. And, and of course, you, you you know, you can walk up sleep calling on your own. There's lots of self-guided tours and audio tours. But um, as a visitor, I think, you know, getting those experiences is really unique and special. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can imagine that it's something quite unique to delve into those songs that haven't been, as you said, that had been unheard for a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. Which poses for me a lot of questions that I'm not sure you're the right person <laughs> to answer is, but like, how did she know the melody <laughs> and all of that? But uh, yeah, so yeah. so um, it sounds fantastic. So, so so some of the songs don't have melodies or, or music to them, and some do. So they've had to sort of recreate from other songs what mm. what it would have sounded like. But some of them do have the melodies in in the manuscripts that, that they've just rediscovered. But it's those experiences. But I think it's meeting the people. So and I know whenever I whenever I go away, it's meeting local people and seeing how they live their lives. That, that that's what makes. Uh, you know, a destination really special is get, getting that opportunity to meet people. Yeah, and and how has the the landscape defined the life in the geopark? Very much so. So, again, taking that thing for your supper experience and delve a little bit deeper into it. So, in the Ring of Gullion, singing is a really strong tradition. So, there's singing festivals. Lots of the pubs have singing nights, but it's a tradition that goes back hundreds, if not thousands, of years. And the reason for that is because the geology of the landscape has created a natural boundary. So whenever the, the Normans were in England and other in, invaders, they were south of the Ring of Gullion. So they landed in Dublin and Waterford, came north, but couldn't mm -hmm. advance any further past the Ring of Gullion. So it wasn't until 1601 that the English were able to set foot through that boundary. And then that changed everything. So... Ulster, Northern Ireland's part of Ulster, that, that was the Gaelic chieftains ruled it right up until 1601 and a little bit after that. But because the Ring of Gullion was on that boundary, it suffered from a lack of investment. There was lots of raids, there was lots of things going on. So if people hadn't got the money, they, they weren't being invested in, the only instrument they had left was their voices. And because music and song and poetry and literature is so important to our culture, that's the only way they had to express themselves because instruments were expensive and the, the landscape didn't allow them to make the money to buy their buy the instruments. So that's why singing is such a strong cultural thing in, in the Ring of Cullion. So that's just one example, Peter. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm completely sitting here, completely intrigued. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a place you'd want to go just to enjoy the sounds as in in the pub and, and yeah. in the landscape i i like i like the idea of integrating that well that that entire history and and very localized mm. history as you said because the songs from from that experience they were just from one area yeah that sounds like an amazing way to dive into the culture but what is yeah. the what's the landscape like when you go is it forests is it fields what what does the uh, take us take us there take us there so i'll pick one place because our landscape is so varied that, uh, again, we could spend hours talking about all the different things. But I'll pick one place. Mm -hmm. if, if any of your listeners are artists and creative people, there's there's a creative hub. And the, the guy ca called Padre Carher, has, uh, he, he's, him and his wife are artists and um, craft makers. So they've created this place at the foot of Slave Gullion. They have 26 acres. And they planted that up with native Irish woodland. 
So it's a fairly young woodland, but you can imagine at this time of the year, you've got your cherry trees are in blossom. You've got hazel and willow in blossom. You've got the leaves starting to come through in the trees. Really calm place, no noise, no traffic around. While you're sitting in that woodland, you can look up and see the, the ring dike around you. So it's a, literally, you can see the, the ring of mountains from, from that, that side. And then Sleeve Gullion in the middle. So oh. Sleeve Gullion is about 575 meters high and then the ring dike it's a you know, ver- lots of variations but it's roughly 300 meters in height so so that that's in in that one spot that's what you can see and, and, the, and at the bottom of podrig's land there's um, a lovely river that you can go down there and relax and me- he does meditation days so it's a very quiet spot that you can go and visit so that's just okay. w- one place yeah yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. kind of imagine the area as as going coming from the coast that it's you know low then it goes up with a central kind of peak somewhere and then down and into a ring of of higher mountains is that is that correct uh even more varied than that that so again if you've ever heard of where the mountains sweep down to the sea that's us so in a place called restrever uh, the Mourn mountains literally sweep down into the sea so you can stand on a, on a very sort of narrow bit of coastline and you're at sea level and then right up into the high morns so again yeah. that, that, that's where the mountains meet the sea and then you've got that ring dike over in the over in the west of the geopark and then and then our drumlins and our marine environment okay. over over in the east it's quite a large area isn't it yeah it's about 2000 square kilometers so 1600 on land and about 400 in the marine environment so yeah okay i mean i get why you're you're having uh, issues to pick what, what you want to talk about here because it yeah. is it is very large and it sounds very exciting i mean i'm just trying to see how i can visualize it um would i would i have seen the geo park anywhere before yes you probably would have so there are lots of monuments from around the world that are made of more granite so okay. in the Mourne Mountains, there was a, a strong tradition of quarrying the granite. It was, it was very special granite, nice, it was very hard. So again, you you can go up and experience what life was like for those men of Mourne that were up there quarrying those stones. What, what was a, mm-hmm. a day in the life of a, a quarryman? And eat their, eat, again, back to our food, but eat what they ate and drink what they drank. And the experience even gives you a little tipple of potching. The potching is the... Uh, the moonshine of ireland as you could say probably yes absolutely absolutely delicious drink uh, there, there's one in particular just as a side note a, a, a drink that's potching infused with coffee oh absolutely delicious <laughs> and you, you can drink that in, in our geopark too cool. brewed here from from a spring from the Mourne mountain so that mountain water is used to distill that, that that lovely potching where were we that's yes okay top tip for a souvenir right there i have to say oh yes absolutely yeah yeah so sort of back to our the granite. So the granite was used in the construction of the Morn Wall. So it's a 22 mile long wall in the high morns. And that was to sort of fence off the water catchment area. So um, that's where okay. my drinking water comes from. But there are other famous locations like the Hans Christian Andersen statue in Central Park, New York. The Parliament buildings at Stormont in Belfast. Connaught Hotel in London and the 9-11 British Memorial Garden in New York as well are all made of the Mourn granite and I believe also okay. sorry the Princess Diana Memorial is also Mourn granite so yeah so you, people made of very well traveled granite to be honest very well traveled granite yes it's a, it's a for, for any stonemasons listening it's a, it's a really nice light gray full of crystals so it's a, it's a really nice stone you know okay yeah. fair enough fair enough <laughs> and has it uh, has it featured as has has you know the Morn Mountains and, and the Geo Park uh, have they featured in any films that people might have seen? Yes, uh, so one that your listeners might be aware of is Game of Thrones. So there's lots of places around here that you can see where the Game of Thrones was filmed, and my colleagues have made it even easier by putting little panels up and the picture, so a screenshot of the scenes in that landscape. So what, one of my favorite places to go walking is a place called Leitrim Lodge. Yeah. And that is a scene from season one of Game of Thrones where they're walking along with their with their cart. So yeah, that, that that's one scene. But there, there are lots lots of places that Game of Thrones filmed here. T- Tullymore 
Forest Park as well. Again, if your listeners know where the, the wolves attacked somebody in season one, so that's Tullymore Forest Park. But there's, there's lots of areas around here. I can imagine so, especially considering how how diverse you describe the landscape. There must have been many places. Uh, but yeah, that's so fantastic. So if, you, if you've if you watched Game of Thrones, I'm sure, as you must know, if you watch Game of Thrones, a lot of it is from Northern Ireland. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've mentioned so many things about the Geopark, but what's, can I ask, what's your favorite thing to do? Is it- my favorite thing is to get lost in the mountains. So out from my front door, so I live in a, in a wee town called Newcastle, mm-hmm. and from my front door, you can be in the mountains in 15 minutes. So oh. that's the same for all the hotels along the promenade. If anybody's staying there, you're in the mountains, 15 minutes. So, you know, it's fairly hard walk for me up sleeve sleeve donard so that's our that's the highest mountain in northern ireland it's only 850 meters but absolutely incredible walk and on days that i don't have time or i'm not feeling up for it there's you know other walks again 15 minutes outside my front door we can we're into the back of tullymore forest park which is a huge big forest park i rarely see anybody else that back path so you know you really do get lost and you get that feeling of just being alone and with your own thoughts and with the sounds of the birds and the wind and the rain so it's that that's my favorite thing to do yeah just get lost in the mountains so it's, it's kind of this this experience of really immersing yourself into nature yeah and just being one with the moment and yeah and being undisturbed that sounds absolutely fantastic i do have a small uh thing to mention though please don't get lost <laughs> you're out there you're not the geopark manager you i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure derek could find his way out but if you yeah. go F- figuratively figur- figuratively lost. Yeah. figuratively yeah. lost please so again uh just for that we, we have all the maps in online we have maps for sale in the visitor center so yes if you're going in the mountains buy a map or have it on your phone yeah, yeah. <laughs> good idea and get fig- figuratively yeah. lost enjoy just get lost in the sense enjoy yourself while you're there uh yeah, yeah. Just, just before we encourage someone to go out there and uh, and recreate the uh, the TV series alone, if anyone has ever watched that, I have. Yes, I'm a big um, fan of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, wouldn't recommend that. There, I mean, you'd probably also be able to uh, find somewhere uh, quite easily. Just you know, find a peak, look out. I'm sure, you can find somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But again, no, get figuratively lost. You no, know, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I think. What you mentioned, though, is, is you mentioned how long was the wall up in the Mourne Mountains? That, that's... So that's 22 miles long. Um, it just had its 100th year anniversary this year. So, you know, we, we, we celebrated that through a photography competition and walks up to the Mourne Wall. But it, it's a it's a it's a piece in the landscape that, you know, it's recognizable. You p- People walk around the 22 miles, so they, they'll have a walk around the wall. Yeah. Um, so but an incredible feat of engineering just for one doing you know, this wall is eight foot high at some places and it follows the catchment so it's not as if people built this where they wanted it follows the peaks of the mountain with the water catchment so it goes right up big steep slopes right up to the peaks of uh, the mountains mm. yeah an, inc- an incredible feature in the landscape so it's not it's not loads of small walls it's more or less the the great wall of the more yeah, mountains yeah. One, one long wall wow that sounds incredible that sounds uh Sounds like it stands out actually in, in a quite beautiful way. Um, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it myself, well, in person, I have to say. Yeah. No, but that's fantastic. So you've mentioned a lot of Irish words already, but any any in particular you might want to share? Yes, I was thinking about this at the start. So it's more of a story than a word. Go for it. So in our geopark, most, if not all, the names are linked back to their Irish mm-hmm. words. But one I want to tell you about is Sleeve Gullion. So Sleeve Gullion is that, that mm. peak with inside the Ring of Gullion. So Sleeve in Irish means mountain. Mm-hmm. And Sleeve Gullion means Cullen's Mountain. Okay. So that's why it's super long. So Cullen was a blacksmith. So 2,000 years ago, a blacksmith lived at the foot of Sleeve Gullion. So that's why it's called Cullen's Mountain. Now, 2,000 years ago, this is Irony Age Ireland. Blacksmiths were really important. They were the magicians of the yeah, time. Of they, they kept the they kept that secret of how to metalwork in families, you know, so, so it was a very secretive um, trade and a very important trade. But the reason why he's so important is because we had a warrior called Cúhollán. 
and Cuchulain was d- the defender of Ulster. So Ulster is uh, Northern Ireland is in Ulster. So he was the defender of Ulster. And King Connor was going from Armagh down to visit the blacksmith. And he asked Cuchulain to join him. So Cuchulain was only a boy of nine or ten years old. And his name back then was Satanta. So King Connor asks Satanta to come join him. But Satanta was playing hurling. So hurling is an, mm. an Irish game of, of stick and ball. So he says, I'll follow you down when I'm finished my game. So King Connor and his entourage went down to Cullen's blacksmith forge, started having dinner. The potching was flowing. They forgot all about Satanta. So Satanta finished his game and he followed them down. When he got to Cullen's blacksmith forge, there was two big Irish wolfhounds standing outside and they went to attack Satanta. And Satanta picked up his stick and his ball and he hit the ball, killed the Irish wolfhounds because they were going to attack him. And there was a lot of commotion, dogs barking, everything like this. Everybody came rushing out, including King Connor and Cullen. So Cullen says, what am I going to do now? I have nobody to protect my blacksmith. And Satanta says, until you grow or until you train two new dogs, I will be your dog, your, your guard dog. Your protector, yeah. Your protector. So Satanta became Ku Hullen. Ku means hound and Cullen is the blacksmith. So that's where Ku Hullen comes from, hound of Cullen. And he is Ulster's famous warrior. So that's where Cuchulain comes from. That is a very cool legend or a very cool story. So you've got the name of Sleeve Gullion surviving today in 2023 from a blacksmith that lived 2000 years ago. Through that story. Through that story, yeah. And that is absolutely there's, amazing. There's so many place names around here with brilliant stories like that's linked to myths and legends. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Giving me goosebumps. It's, it's, I'm, <laughs> I was just sitting here like, oh, this is fantastic. I think I, I have heard the story before, but not as in to say so related to the place. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I think that was it. I I'm I'm very happy here. Um so there's only one question left is how can our listeners find out more about the uh, geopark? Well, the best place is our website. So mourn gullion strangford geopark dot com. Or you just Google Northern Ireland Geopark, we'll come up. Uh, so more than Gullion Strang for geopark.com. That's how you find out more about us. If you want to come visit mm-hmm. us, there's 11 ferry routes that operate to the island of Ireland. So if you want to drive from France, Spain, Scotland, England, Wales, there's 11 ferry routes. And then, of course, our two biggest airports would be Belfast and Dublin. And we are only 50 minutes from Belfast and about one hour from Dublin. So um, it's really easy to get here. We're on the Really East central. Coast. Yeah, really central. We're on the east coast of Ireland. Surrounded by urban centers, Belfast and Dublin, but we are a wilderness. Do you know it's it's yeah, it's it's not a city, it's not in the city, it's not near no, the city, no. it's no. outside, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's it sounds it well, it sounds like a land of myth and legend. I mean it, exactly that, yeah. Thank you very, very much for uh telling me about the landscape, about the food. I'm hungry now. Um and then <laughs> Yeah, just about the story. I mean, I'm really, I really love the the story there, the last one. That's that's amazing. So, Brilliant. thank you very, very much, Darren. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Peter. Mm-hmm.